every one of you out there today has the ability to ride a multi-million dollar vehicle, regardless of your social class status. And no, I'm not talking about the $600,000 Rolls Royce. What I'm referring to is the bus. My name is Theodore Yu, and I'm a huge transit fan here in Vancouver. It all started the second I was able to take my head away from the baby mobile above my head and turn it outside the window looking up the street of Hong Kong. The first thing I saw was the mini green bus traveling down the street outside my parents' apartment. I instantly fell in love with that vehicle, and my love for transit expanded there to trains and double-decker buses. In fact, when I was a child, I would kneel down on the metal seats of the trains in Hong Kong and do sing-along announcements with them. I also gave the, name, the two types of trains in Hong Kong at the time names, the older generation being the album train and the newer generation being the hmm train. Those two names were made based on the way that the door closes. And let me tell you, you do not want to run through the closing door of the album train because it closes with such a high force that it will bounce back and close again, giving it double the chance to crush your soul. <laughs> when I moved to Vancouver, I fell in love with the seats that Transing has on the older generation buses, the big sofa seats. Well, that was the case until Transing decided to switch over to the more eco-friendly and thinner seats, which did take a while for my bum to get used to. In grade three, I started making paper bus model on the back of my math homework. And yes, when my math teacher asked me to hand in my math homework, I told him that the bus ate my homework. He didn't trust me at first, so I had to flip the bus over and show him the inside of the bus. And when he found out it was true, he wasn't too happy about it. So he made me disassemble the whole bus and hand in the homework in pieces of buses. I don't know how he read that, but he managed to mark the homework. Throughout elementary school, I, my favorite item that I owned was the transit map that I got for free at the SkyTrain station. I started by memorizing all the bus routes that there are in North Vancouver, the city that I grew up in, going down to Vancouver and later on to Richmond, which all of these became very useful as I got older. In grade 10, I realized that 80% of my friends in high school have never taken transit before, and that got me to give them a crash course on how to transit, starting with the compass card system and how it works. Later on, leading to the requesting a stop and also the operation of the back door, which all seems very intu intuitive to us out there who have been transiting, but it's a mystery for those who have never transited before. And some of my friends at first thought that this was unnecessary until they started reaching the end of high school when they need to think about the commute for independence. And they realized that there's no more daddy can drive me anywhere anymore. And that's when they came back to me for another in-depth lesson on how to transit. So this all comes down to this TED talk right now. And Today, I'm here to tell you the importance of transit education, and more specifically, how to master the secret formula of public transportation. Over the years, I've always wondered why parents don't teach their kids on how to transit. And, oh, and I've collected a lot of facts. In fact, can you guess what some of the most recent one is? The most recent one and the number one that I've got over the years is, I've got a Tesla. But that doesn't change the fact that there's an extra car on the road. Yes, Teslas are electric, but so are some of the buses out there. And buses are way cooler than Teslas, let me tell you that. Second point is, the wait time is too long. And it all comes down to how you plan your commute. If you plan it right, you can slice down on a lot of those wait times out there. The third point is, I don't want to share a vehicle with anyone. But didn't we all learn that sharing is caring back in kindergarten? We should all bring that back into our adulthood life and learn that sharing is caring. The fourth and final point that I'll say today is transit makes me look cheap. And for those of you that think that out there, keep that thought in mind because you guys are 100% right. Transit commuters out there are saving a lot of money per year. In fact, commuters, transit commuters are paying one-eighth of the cost compared to owning a Toyota Corolla, the basic of cars. 
And for students out there, you guys are safe paying one sixteenth of the cost compared to driving a Toyota Corolla. But even with all these perks in mind, why is transit considered as the lower class travel option? And that's the case because we're all constantly fed with facts about why we should transit. And very few of us were actually taught on how to transit. And this comes into play, especially in, the can in Canada and America, where car is the dominant role of transportation. And with the majority of overriding a minority group, that automatically selects that car is the higher social class status, putting transportation on the lower portion of the spectrum. So who's responsible for this type of education? And the first party involved would be the transit companies themselves. While, yes, teaching people why they should transit is important, but more specifically, we, no one is going to know how to use it unless they learn how to transit in the first place. Yes, some com transit companies out there have started teaching people how to transit, but that's only in the small community and in several schools only. What we need is everyone in the world deserves an education on transit. And that brings the second party involved, which is the government. While funding the infrastructure of transit is important, but more importantly, if no one knows how to use transit, no matter how good the infrastructure is, no one's going to be able to use it. And that's why government is to fund the marketing team and more specifically the outreach team to enable them to go out there into every single school to teach people how to transit. The third party involved is you yourself. After acquiring those knowledge, you need to take a step out there and to experience the transit and test out the knowledge that you've made. Recently, I got a phone call from one of my friends that I helped in high school, and he told me that as he was getting on the bus one evening, the gentleman in front of him could not tap the compass card in the right place. He keeps tapping it on the screen while he should be tapping where the compass logo is. And as he got closer, he realized that the gentleman was our social studies 11 teacher. And it was his first time taking transit. So my friend being such an amazing friend, he taught him a crash course on how to transit. Funny enough, just three years ago, he was teaching us the importance of our society and all these complex concepts that we need to know. But we ne somehow we neglect the teaching of public transit an essential life skill that we all need in today's world. So why am I telling you this story? And this is because throughout evolution, we went from using our feet to horses, to bikes, and to cars, all with one intention in mind, and that is efficiency. With that in mind, the most logical approach to take after car will be public transit, but that has to be taken with one purpose and that is valuing passengers' experience. And this is something that we all need to take into account in our university and our daily commute lives because our commute marks the start of our day and the end of our day. Whatever happens at the start of our commute will shape our mood for that day. And whatever we end our commute with on that day will mark how we remember that specific day for the rest of our lives. As I got accepted to university, I was super excited, just like many of you are, when you got the admission letter from UBC saying, you've been accepted. I was like, yes, just like all of you guys were. But instead of being excited about frat parties or going to flexing to your friends about the engineering course that you guys will be taking, I was super excited about my commute to school. <laughs> because, hear me out, I was able to take all the knowledge that I've acquired over the years and also the theories that I've made as a kid to work. And point number two is that we, I'm pretty confident to flex to my friends because UBC has the biggest bus loop of all the other universities in Vancouver. We have 12 different bus routes, while others have three and four bus routes. We're like four times the amount here. Pretty amazing. And for the theories that I've been testing out, I'll share my secret on how to master public transportation. And step number one is valuing your comfort. And we, I think we can all agree that 
no matter how efficient your commute is. Without comfort, you will not like your commute. And under comfort, the first thing that you need to think about is the direct route is not always the best commute. And that's because all of us here always is stuck to your Google Maps. And if everyone is going from point A to point B using Google Maps, you guys will all be stuck on the same bus and crammed like sardines. And that's not an ideal situation. The second point is, when it comes to comfort, I'm a very quirky person. I have my favorite seat on the bus. Not the one in front of it, not the one behind it, not the one beside it, but that specific seat. And that's because, A, it's no center of gravity, so I can sleep on the bus. B, it's the window seat, so I can look out there and enjoy the beautiful sceneries without being a distracted driver. And three, if the bus in the scenario that it does get jam-packed like a can of sardines, the person beside me sitting in the aisle seat is the one getting squished, not me. So keep that in mind if you don't want to get squished out there. Third point is, I have seasonal buses. And that is because in the hot summer days here in Vancouver, I make sure to plan my commute that I get on an air-conditioned bus. And you can tell them apart because if for the air-conditioned buses, between the two windows, the pillar is covered with glass. Whereas the non-AC buses, it has a metal pillar. And if you can't see it from far away, just look for reflections, okay? But there's a simpler way. And if you don't want to wait in the heat, and that is using tcombusferrytrain.com. And that only works in Vancouver buses. If you look up the bus number, and it will show you the departure time, along with all the registration numbers. If the registration number starts with 1,200 and higher, that means you get on an AC bus. And that way, you get the departure time, the bus that you'll be getting on, and you can ensure 100% that you'll be getting on an air-conditioned bus without waiting in the heat for hours, just waiting for buses to pass by like this. So I think it's transit smart. If you get to the bus loop, and you see a big crowd of people waiting for that same bus and trying to squeeze on like sardines, Take a step back and look at your departure times. Most likely in that scenario, people are jamming on that bus that has been delayed because of traffic reasons or other reasons. And if the departure time for the next bus is coming within five minutes, just wait, because the amount of time that it takes those people to jam onto that bus, it's going to be like three to four minutes. And it's worth waiting. And for that specific scenario, all I waited was 20 seconds. As the first bus was pulling out, the second bus was pulling right in. And I got the whole bus to myself. Not only that, I sacrificed my seat, my favorite seat on the bus, to shoot you guys that picture. So be thankful for that. <laughs> After you've mastered comfort, next thing to value is efficiency. And choose the bus that leaves the most frequent because A, you have more chance of getting onto a bus, and B, it, you can have the autonomy of choosing when to leave. Second thing is choose the bus that stops at the least amount of stop because every time a bus pulls over when someone rings the, rings the bell, it's a 30 second added to your commute of delay. Next thing is consider the road condition. Think about if the bus goes on a one-lane street versus a four-lane street or versus a street that has bus lanes in it. It makes a huge difference in your commute. Things avoid rush hour, which seems very intuitive. But if you leave earlier in the day and come home later at night, you can avoid getting stuck in traffic for three hours. And all of you guys out there has better things to do in life than to sit in traffic for three hours straight. And yes, you might be snacking off sleep schedule, so I thought of that as well. You can sleep on the bus. Since you're leaving earlier in the day, there's no one on the bus. You get the whole bus to yourself, so sit down on your favorite seat. But don't forget to set your alarm because you don't want to oversleep or be stressed out about, is it there yet? Is it there yet? So set your alarm for that specific day or even for your daily commute, and you know when to get off. So now that we know the comfort efficiency formula on how to master public transit, let's put this into work. My, the commute that I get requested a lot at UBC is going from UBC to Waterfront Station, which is the center hub of transit here in Vancouver. And also, apparently, according to some people, it's the center of parties as well. But when you punch that in Google Maps, it gives you three options. Option one, you includes the express bus here, 
and it takes 30, on average, 35 minutes to get to UBC, which is amazing, right? Sounds amazing. But that's only good if you can, A, get on the bus, and B, and not have to wait for the bus to arrive. So that sometimes can get people to opt for option two and option three. But those options take double to triple the amount of time to get you to downtown, and it stops at 37 different stops compared to eight. But what if I tell you that there's an option for out there that Google Maps doesn't tell you about? And that involves taking the busiest bus routes in Canada and America combined, the 99B line. And yes, you guys may be thinking, it's the busiest bus route, so how do we get on? It's only busiest bus route out there between the two SkyTrain stations. And what I'm telling you right here is the routes that we'll be taking will be getting off at the first SkyTrain station. When everyone wants to get on, you're getting off already. So you'll be good. And this whole commute takes 35 minutes, which including the SkyTrain. And if you recall correctly, it's the same amount of time as option number one. But instead of waiting in nine, or even thinking about, oh, when does the bus leave? I gotta be there ahead of time to make sure I am able to get on the bus. You get the autonomy of when you wanna leave campus. And best of all, this bus comes every three minutes during rush hour, faster than you can load up Netflix using the campus Wi-Fi. <laughs> Trust me, it's true, test it out later. And even during non-wash hours and weekends, it comes every six minutes, which is insanely quick. So now that you know how it works, how do you convince yourself to take transit? After choosing to take transit, you save all these monies from owning a car, thousands of dollars per year on expenses. Congratulations, all of you. You can now finally afford Netflix. And you can download a movie during a movie show that you like and watch it on your bus ride home. But be careful on how you use this positive reinforcement in your transit commute. Because if you start watching Netflix, the show that you want, in your boring prof's class, you ruin that positive reinforcement and screw up your dopamine system. So be careful about that. Only watch it on your bus ride home and keep it as a positive reinforcement. So how do you, when do you know where to start? this process, and it depends on where you fall in the transit system point of view. And the bottom one is the people that do not take transit and will avoid it at all costs. If you're in that stage, start by learning about the transit system around your neighborhood and learn how it works, and more specifically, test them out yourself. Start taking transit. For those of you that are on the stage of take transit, hate transit, employ that comfort and efficiency formula. I guarantee you that it will make a positive impact in your commute. The second stage is you take transit and not transit. Congratulations, if you're in that stage, you've reached the top of the pyramid. And I encourage you to go and teach transit out there to all your friends out there to spread that knowledge of how to take transit smart. And for those of you school nerds out there, and don't understand how this works, I've got you covered. Think of it this way. Bachelor, master, PhD, and professor of taking public transit. Once you reach the professor stage, go ahead out there and teach people about transit. For example, over the years, I started to teach people about the option four, to think outside the box that there's an option four out there. And funny enough, once you tell them that there's an option four and they tried it out, and experience the speed themselves, they'll start regretting all the life decisions that they've made on transit previously. And think about all the time that they've lost because they've used Google Maps on their daily commute. Number two is, last year I started going on social media and educating people on public transit. This specific video here talked about taking transit for the planet. And I made this as a competition to TransLink. In fact, this specific video got me four free Canucks tickets to my first ever Canucks game, making it free at Watchers Arena. And yes, I, learned, I know that sharing is caring, so I shared it with my friends. I started volunteering at TransLink's volunteering program this past summer, 
and to educate people out there about transit, whether they're locals or they are tourists, getting them to the destination that they need, or even just telling them how the transit system works. And you get to see that happy face on them when they realize that, oh my gosh, I'm not lost anymore. In December of last year, I received a certificate of excellence from Transing CEO Kevin Queen as a certificate of award for enhancing passengers' experience on the public transit system. There's so many creative ways out there that you can go and help people on transit, whether that is going, just teaching your friends about option four, or going on social media, or going in person in the transit system to help people. The key point is, just get started. Because if we don't get started, there's no point of going. With that being said, as you teach people about transit, keep in mind that, yes, transit for the planet is fantastic. But also think about hashtag transit smart, and more importantly, hashtag teach transit. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.